Hi there, so welcome to uh, the first segment of Lecture 4, where we're going to start talking about 3D stress tensors um, and how to find uh, principal stresses in the 3D case. So um, let's first think about what we've done already, uh, probably, hopefully, at school, um, on eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Because the thing to notice, what we've done in 2D so far, if we said that a general stress tensor, if we just think about 2D, so a stress tensor like that, can be rotated to find a new stress tensor with principal stresses, sigma 1 and sigma 2, and no shears. And notice what we've done is we found a diagonal matrix with no off-axis terms. That is, we found the matrix which has the eigenvalues in it, or the tensor which has the eigenvalues in it. And the eigenvalues are, in fact, the principal stresses. So if we take that into the 3D case, let's think about what happens. So in the 3D case, we've got a stress tensor with three normal stresses, sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, and sigma 3, 3. And we've got three off-axis stresses. Got a sigma 1, 2, a sigma 1, 3, and a sigma 2, 3. And so it's a square symmetric tensor with uh, six different numbers in it. That is, three diagonal terms and three off-diagonal terms that are symmetric. And if those are real numbers, it turns out that it must have three real eigenvalues, or principal stresses, and three I corresponding eigenvectors, which must be orthogonal to each other. And so let's look at how we find those. If we call this uh, matrix M, then it'll be familiar that we can always find an eigenvector x. And the effect of the matrix on x is only to stretch it by an amount lambda, by a factor lambda, which we call the eigenvalue. So this is the eigenvalue, and x is the eigenvector. And uh, you could then say, m minus lambda times i, x is equal to 0. Um, and then that can only be true for a general x that's not a, a trivially 0. That can only be true if the determinant of m minus lambda i is equal to naught. Um, and uh, in this case, we can find the determinant for a 3 by 3 matrix. Um, that will give us a, a cubic to solve. Um, and then we can uh, find out what the necessary value of a lambda is in order to generate a cubic that has uh, a, an answer of zero. Because it's a cubic, there'll be three possible values of lambda, and so there'll be three possible eigenvalues and three corresponding eigenvectors. Once we've found the eigenvalues, we can plug back into here to find the eigenvector by setting up three simultaneous equations. We would do that three times for each of the eigenvalues to find the three eigenvectors, and then we'd be home free. So in order to do this, we need to know how to find eigenvalues. So um, let's just think about that for a, an example. So if this was a stress matrix, if we take um, this stress matrix here, and we take off uh, lambda times i, minus lambda times i, and find the determinant of that. Um, if we make this a general matrix, actually, then we make all these terms A, um, and then we'll be the same as the notes. So I'll just do that, just for the sake of consistency with the notes. I'm on page 12, so I've got A11, A22, A33, A12, A13, A23, A12, A13, A23. And when I take off lambda i, I'll have minus lambda in here, minus lambda in here, minus lambda in here. And then it reduces to finding the determinant there and setting it to 0, the determinant being denoted by the long straight line rather than the round bracket. So multiplying that out, we have to 
uh, what we do is we say that that's equal to, um, we go across this column, finding that times the determinant of this, that times the determinant of the matrix left behind when we take out the row and column, and that times the determinant of that 2 by 2 matrix. And we apply what's called the checkerboard pattern to those th first three indexes, the checkerboard pattern being this. Uh, sorry. Minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, uh, plus. And we could do it with any row or any column, but usually you just go for the top row. So let's, let's do that. So we'll do it just with the top row. So we'll have A11 minus lambda times the determinant of A22 minus lambda, A23, uh, A23, A33 minus lambda. Then applying the checkerboard pattern, we have a minus A12 times the determinant of the thing left behind when we take out this row and column that the A12 is in. So that's A12, A23, A13, and A33 minus lambda. And then finally we have a plus A13, so the plus has come from the checkable pattern here, and the determinant of the matrix that's left behind when we take out the A13. And that gives us A12, A22 minus lambda, uh, A13, a23. Okay, so then we multiply those guys out and we'll have our solution. So we'll have 0 equals, I'm just going to put the checkerboard pattern off to one side over here. A 0 equals, multiplying that out, a11 minus lambda times the determinant of this is those two multiplied together minus those two multiplied together. So that's a22 minus lambda, a33 minus lambda, minus A23 squared, bracket, bracket, curly bracket, square bracket. Then we've got to do this guy, minus A12 times A12, A33 minus lambda, minus A23, A13, plus A13 times a12 a, uh, times A23 minus A13 times A22 minus lambda. Okay, so we can see if we multiply this out, we're going to get a cubic in lambda, um, and uh, oops, sorry, um, and. That cubic, uh, we'll get a cubic term here, and so we'll get some quadratic terms and some singles. Here we'll get another lambda term. Here we'll get another lambda term. And uh, then we've got to solve that cubic. Now, in general, there's no rule for solving cubics. You need to find the first root by inspection, um, at which point you can substitute in that root and find uh, the quadratic by substitution. Then what we can do um, is we can solve having found our values of lambda, so dot, 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 find lambda. Um, and there'll be three solutions, so we'll call them lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. Then, in order to find our eigenvectors, um, then we solve the equation sigma minus lambda i times x, being our eigenvector, equals 0, and find, get three simultaneous equations to find the indices of x, x1, x2, x3, x, y, z, whatever you want to call it, some vector. Now, because mx equals lambda x, the scale of the eigenvector isn't set. Um, we can put a factor 2 through here. We'd have an eigenvector of 2x now. 3x, 4x, whatever you like, any real number. Um, 3.2 times x, whatever you like. And this equation would still work. So the scale of the eigenvector isn't set. Um, and so, in general, if x is an eigenvector, then alpha x is an eigenvector too. Um, and 
if this is a s real symmetric matrix, then the eigenvalues are real, and the eigenvectors are orthogonal to each other. Um, and if they're scaleless, we can do something like we can make them all unit vectors. And therefore, as we showed in one of the class sessions, you actually need five numbers to define the three eigenvectors. The third eigenvector is defined by the cross product of the other two. Okay? Um, the first eigenvector has three indices. The second one has two indices, and the third one you can find by the dot product that it must be at 90 degrees to the first one. So you need five numbers only to find uh, the set of eigenvectors, and the others are then defined. So let's do an example, essentially. But before we do that, there's one little trick to show you, which is uh, just kind of fun. Um, and that is the following. <coughs> we said that mx equals lambda x, where x is a vector and m is a 3 by 3 matrix or tensor. Now, if I made a matrix of the eigenvalues, that is, I made a matrix D that was lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, with the other values being 0, like that. Now, imagine I make a big matri a matrix big X, which consists of the three eigenvectors, so x1, x2, x3. Then we can do the following. We can say m times big X is equal to x times big D. So imagine doing that. For the first one, we've got uh, the first row of m, so here's big M. We take the first row of m times the first column vector, and that gives us the first column vector, uh, sorry, this row, times the first column of d. And that row just gives us lambda times the first ins instance of x1. This row here, so that's x1, x2, x3, lambda, 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 naught, 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 naught. So when I do, let's just be a bit clearer, if I do row times column, I've got the first row of m times that column gives me lambda times the first one of those. So I've got my first entry here is equal to lambda times x1, 1. The second entry here, row times column, gives me this row times that, which is equal to this row times that, which is equal to uh, that entry times lambda. So it's lambda 2 times x2, comma 1. When I do the third row times the third column here, I've got lambda 3 times x3, comma 1. And so on and so on when I multiply it out. And what that ends up giving me is lambda 1, x1, comma 2, lambda 1, x1 comma 3, um, lambda 2, x2 comma 2, lambda 2, x2 comma 3, lambda 3, x3 1, lambda 3, x, uh, x3 2, x3 3. So what this is, this is lambda x1, lambda, oops, lambda x1, 1, lambda x2, lambda x3. So this is m times lambda x gives me the first column of this right-hand side. m times the second eigenvector gives me the second one. m times the third eigenvector gives me the third one. So this is these guys done for each one in turn. So this is really true when I write down d and x that way. So this then Big X is the matrix of eigenvectors, and Big D is the diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues entered along the principal diagonal. Um, and if you're familiar with tensor mass, 
This is then the rotation matrix that gets me to the principal axes. That's the exciting thing about it. Now, the other thing we can do is we can use this as a cute way because we can do the following. We can say that D, if we multiply on the left by x to the minus 1, is x to the minus 1 m x. Or we can say that m is equal to, multiply on the right-hand side by x to the minus 1, x d x to the minus 1. So if you want to find the power m to the power of something, so I don't know, m to the power of 99, we'd have x d x to the minus 1 times x d x to the minus 1 99 times. So let's just make it m to the n n times. And notice, x to the minus 1 times x disappears. So what we end up with is we end up with x d to the n, x to the minus 1. And raising d to the power of n is just raising the lambdas to the power of n, which is easy. So this gives us an easy way to find m to, the val to a very high power, um, which is just kind of fun. just thought I'd show it to you as a bit of an aside. So what we have is that this guy, big X, is the matrix of eigenvectors, which is the rotation matrix, or rotation tensor, because this looks like tensor maths, right? This is the rotation tensor that takes you to the principal axes, and these are the values of the principal stresses, and that's the interpretation. What we'll do in the second, in uh, the following lecture, lecture five, is we'll show how that works out by doing an inclined plane in 3D um, and showing that that gives us the same answer as a tensor rotation. So, um, what we'll do now is we'll do an example of this, of finding the principal stresses. So I'm looking at section 3.6. So, have a material which is subject to the following stress state. 100, 20, 0, 20, 0, 20. 0, 20, 100. We've got to have a unit, megapascals. And the question is, what are the principal stresses? So what we want to do is we want to find the eigenvalues. So what we're going to do is we will find the eigenvalues of this matrix. So I've got 100 minus lambda, 20, 0, 20, 0, minus lambda, 20, 0, 20, 100 minus lambda, find the determinant of that and set it to zero. So what I've got is I've got 100 minus lambda times square bracket minus lambda into 100 minus lambda minus 20 squared minus 20 times 20 times 100 minus lambda Uh, minus 20 times naught, naught, and then plus zero times who cares what's in there because it's zero. So notice, in order to solve the cubic, I want to be able to do it by inspection to find the first root. So I'm going to avoid multiplying out the 100 minus lambda if I possibly can because it looks like that's going to be a root. So let's see what we get. So if we got, we've got 100 minus lambda here, and here we've got uh, lambda squared minus 100 lambda plus 40, uh, 20 times 20, uh, 200, 400. And here we've got uh, plus 100 minus lambda times minus 400. OK, so we collect our 100 minus lambda terms together. And we've got 100 minus lambda, lambda squared, uh, minus 100 lambda, uh, let me just check. That's a minus sign. Uh, That's 
be a plus. Let me just check. Minus 20 squared there. Ah, no, minus 20. That is a minus sign. Yeah, minus 800. There we go. Got my minus signs. So we can say that this has a solution of lambda is 100 or lambda is equal to, we've just got to solve this quadratic, um, minus b over 2a, so 100 over 2, plus minus a half, the square root of b squared, so that's 10,000, minus 4ac, so ac, so plus 800, 1600, 3200. Um, and that's 13,200. Um, uh, take out the 4, and I'll just get a calculator and work out the answer, um, which is here. Um, <coughs> so 13,200 divided by 4 is 3,300 um, divided by 33. Um, So that's 50 plus minus uh, 10 root 33, as it turns out, I think. Uh, 13,200. Let me just work that out. Um, 20 squared times 2 is 800. Um, uh, d -d 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 times 4 is 200. Plus 10,000, 13,200, divided by 100, divided by 4. Yep, that's the answer. So those are our values for our principal stresses. Um, and we found them very trivially, very nice. Um, so the last thing to do is I'm going to go through, i just find it, um, the first example in the problem set. And what we're going to do in this problem is we're going to do an example for a 2D stress state uh, where we're going to do it by Mohr's circle and we're going to do it by finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors and we'll show that they're the same. So. This is another example. So, we've got a material subject to a 2D stress state, 20, 60, 60, 180 MPA. Okay, so we'll do it by Mohr's circle first and find its principal stresses, maximum shear stress, and the angle between the principal stress axes and the original axes. So we've got a, a little square. It's got a stress of 20 and 180. It's got a shear stress of 60 applied to its axes x and y. OK, so I take uh, 180, 60 and 20, 60, draw a circle between them. Um, the center is going to be at 200 divided by 2 is 100 MPA. Um, and the radius, this is now 60, 80, it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle, it's 100. So the principal stresses are 200 um, and 0. So I'll have to replace my axis, my vertical axis. Fine. And it would look nicer if I could draw a circle. Okay. And um, so the principal stresses are 0 and 200 MPA. The max shear is 100 MPA, is the radius of Mohr's circle. Um, and the angle between 
the original, in this case, y-axis and the largest principal stress axis, that angle, 2 theta. Uh, tan of it is equal to opposite over adjacent is equal to 60 over 80, um, which is equal to 3 quarters. So theta, if you go and do it, turns out to be 18.43 degrees. And that's the rotation angle between the y-axis and the principal stress axis, and it's that way counterclockwise. So our new set of axes, that angle there is 18.4 degrees. That's our 200. That's our zero. And this is our, uh, when we've done this rotation, that's our x prime, y prime set of axes. So that's how you do it in a circle. Um, and notice that we've, we've got to go back to drawing the little infinitesimal cube to work out the sense of the rotation and which axis is where. But remember, we've gone from the 180 round, so it's 18.4 clockwise round, so counterclockwise round, um, from the original 180 axis. So that way is 18.4. So that's 18.4 degrees there, which means that's 18.4 degrees there. OK, good. So let's do it by finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And I'll leave that there. <coughs> so we want to solve um, the eigenvalue equation. So we want to solve 20 minus lambda, 180 minus lambda, 60, 60 is equal to 0. Okay, so we can multiply that out. We've got 20 minus lambda, 180 minus lambda, minus 60 squared is equal to 0. So we've got 20 times 180, which is 3,600. Um, we've got minus 20 and minus 180, so minus 200 lambdas, plus lambda squared, minus 3,600 is equal to 0. Uh, the 3600 are going to cancel very conveniently. So we've got lambda goes into lambda minus 200 is equal to 0. So lambda is equal to 0 or 200 megapascals, as we found before. Very nice. OK. Um, then to find the angle between these axes and uh, the original axes, we've got to find the eigenvectors. So if you want to find the eigenvectors, then we've got to solve some equations like this. We've got to solve an equation like 20, 60, 60, 180. Some eigenvector x, y is equal to lambda, some eigenvector x, y. So for lambda is equal to naught, we'll get 20x plus 60y is equal to 0. So that means that uh, if we take divide it through by 20, x plus 3y is equal to 0. Um, so uh, if we have uh, x is 3, then y would be minus 1. So we'd have 3 minus 1 is a solution. It could also be 6 minus 2 or minus 3 plus 1. Any of those would work. And we're going to go for making it a unit eigenvector. So we'll go for making it 1 over root 10 times 3 minus 1 and 4 lambda is equal to naught. Now notice the second row the second row would also give us 60x plus 180y is equal to naught. That row, that column is equal to 0y. And that gives us, divide through by 60, x plus 3y is equal to 0. So the two rows give us the same answer. If it was a 3 by 3 matrix, what we'd find is we'd have the third one would be some linear combination of the other two rows. That is, there'd be one redundant one. And that's because the scale of the eigenvector isn't set. So don't worry about that. You just pick one of them, big one, and work out what the other two values are, or other, if it's 2D, the other value is, and then make it work. Yeah? And if it doesn't work, well, then the answer is that the value you should have chosen was 0, and then you can make it work. OK, great. So let's do that for the other eigenvector. Um, so for lambda is equal to 200. So for lambda is equal to 200, we'll have uh, 20x plus 60y 
is equal to 200x. That is 60, uh, sorry, 60y is equal to 180x. Divide through by 60, y is equal to 3x. So then we'd have a value if x was 1, y would be 3. So our unit eigenvector will be 1, 3 for lambda is equal to 200. And we need to put the megapascals on these two. So let's draw those out on a set of axes. So let's have an x and a y axis. So that's our x, and our y, or our first axis and our second axis, whatever you want to call them. And uh, 3 minus 1, 3 along, 1 down, is there. So that's 3 minus 1. And 1, 3 is up here, comma 3. Now, let's just check. These two, what's the dot product of them? The dot product of 3 minus 1 with 1, 3 is 3 minus 3 is 0. So these are actually at 90 degrees to each other. Nice. So the eigenvectors must be at 90 degrees to each other, and the principal axes are at 90 degrees to each other. Nice. All very intuitive. And if we want to work out the angle between... Uh, let's say the 200 MPA axis and the original Y axis, the 200 MPA axis was 1 to 3, the original Y axis was there, so this angle, yeah, so this angle will be given by tan theta is equal to the opposite um, over the adjacent, um, so as a third, and if we work out arc tan of a third, hopefully it'll be 18.43. And it, in fact, is 18.43 degrees. Um, so this is the same answer as we generated using Mohr's circle, which is very pleasing. Um, and the angle between this axis and the original x-axis is 90 minus it, and so on and so forth. So it all kind of pans out. So um, we can use eigenvalues and eigenvectors to find the principal axes and the principal stresses in just the same way as Mohr's circle, except that it'll work generally for the 3D case. Um, and therefore, we have a way to deal with 3D stress states. And since the world is 3D, that's a very handy thing to be able to do. And in the next segment, we'll look at extending this to general stress rotations in 3D, which will then be general tensor rotations. And that's it for this segment.